Okay, our next tutorial is going to be sending a piece of information, a string, which is some words basically, to a text field. So we're going to learn a little bit about text fields and we're going to learn yet another property that we can pass through uh, Flash. Okay, so I'm going to just move this guy down a little bit to make a bit of room. I'm going to open up a new Action Script 3 file. Okay, and our default uh, layout again, our stage is up here. Um, I've dragged my Actions palette, which we have sometimes been um, docking here. I'm actually going to undock it and then I'm going to snap it into my timeline palette just uh, so that I have access to it. Okay, uh, let's organize our layers first. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer called graphics. Graphics, like that. I'm going to create another layer. That's going to be uh, actions. Uh, and I might make one more. It's got my text field on it. Okay, let's start with our, actually let's start with our text field. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the text tool and if I click uh, it creates a, depending on what your current settings are, let me delete that, um, you can, yours is probably set to static. So when I click it just creates a field and I can start typing. That's not actually what I want. So what you're going to do instead is you're going to go to the text field you're going to choose from this drop down, the second drop down here, dynamic text. Now, static text is just like a label. Like, uh, you know, if I've got um, a video game and I've got a high score and it says high score, that would be static text. That doesn't change. But above the high score or maybe below the high score is a, a box that keeps changing every time your um, score changes. Well, that would be dynamic text. And that's what we want. We want a dynamic text box because that's going to change every time we do anything. So I'm going to drag a selection, and this will be my dynamic text field. We need to give it an instance name, so I'm going to call it sent message. I'm going to make the capital uh, the M capitalized so that it is easy to distinguish the, the word sent message. Um, and that goes on my text field. I'm going to create on my graphics layer a button. It's going to be a circle. I'm going to select it, modify it convert it to a symbol. It's going to be a button named button1. Okay. I'm going to make the instance name the same thing, button1. Okay, so now my, my button has got an instance name. And right now if I run this, nothing happens. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, it just It's just a button and we've got a, a text field that we can't see because there's nothing in it yet. Great. I'm going to double click this and I'm going to add another frame here with our rollover state, so like that guy, oops, maybe that, okay, and now my my button does that, great, and I'm actually going to very quickly talk about what's happening, when I when I test this, I get this output window here, and it's telling, it's giving me a message, fonts should be in, embedded for any text that may be edited at runtime, what it's saying is, because I have a text field here, if it were a normal text field, like it, it like um, you know, high score, okay, and my instead of being a dynamic text field was static, then Flash would know that I would just be using the letters H I G H and S C O R E. Those those words they would no those letters I should say would be included in the output file that I test, right? This this oops. Uh, I put that in the wrong spot. It saves that in the output file and it has those letters, but let me delete this now. Um, because we have this, which is a dynamic text field, we can put any text in there. And because of that, Flash doesn't know what characters to include. So we have to do something called embedding. So I click on this guy and then I'm going to go over here to my properties window and under character, okay, this might be closed, so be aware that it could be closed. I'm going to click on embed. And that says, I want to embed for this font that's being used on the text field back there, I want to embed all of the glyphs, which is all of the shapes, all the numbers, all the letters, all the special characters, everything. Uh, and you can see that's a lot of numbers. Uh, uppercase, lowercase, everything gets included. Um, and that just means that when I output it, no matter what character is used, it'll work fine. I hit OK, and now when I run my test, I don't get any of that. That um, output window doesn't pop up. Okay? All right. Okay, so there's my text field, there's my button. I now want to add a piece of code 
that when I click on this button, it's going to send some text to this window. So let's open up our actions. I'm going to click on this because I need to have it selected. And I'm going to go to Code Snippets. Now last time in our last tutorial, we opened up the timeline navigation and we used the uh, click and go to next frame and stop. This time we're going to be using an event handler. An event handler watches for an event and it does something when that event happens. We want a mouse click event because when I click on this button, I'm clicking, that's the event, and I want Flash to pay attention for when I do it. So we have this selected, okay, I have it selected, and then I double click mouse event. And you can see what happens. Hide that. Okay, so what you see is that Flash adds a whole bunch of code. These are instructions just giving you a, a, kind of an indication of what this code does. So it says click on the specified symbol, the one I just had selected, executes the function, and you can add your own instructions. So what happens right now, by default, it targeted that button one, which is that green button right there. Okay, button one, button one, fine. So it targets the button one and it says add event listener mouse event click. So pay attention for a click. Okay, and when I click on it, that it's initiated. It says, oh, I just I just noticed somebody clicking on the green button, and it runs a function. The function is called mouse handler. Now I could call this anything. I could call it Betty if I wanted to. That wouldn't be very useful. So I'm going to call it send a message. Okay, that's going to be the new name of the function. Uh, and here's where it runs that. So I got to save this send a message. So this goes hey, if anybody clicks on this button, run this function. And this function is defined here. So what you can see is it says function send a message is defined by this. Now again, there's some code in here. So these guys are commented out and it's just this is instructions for you, the user, to know what this function does. So start your own custom code. This example code displays the words mouse clicked in the output panel. Trace. A trace means um, print these words. It says, you know, show me these words in an output window. So right now it says, show me these words, mouse click. So when I run this, and nothing happens until I click on this. When I click on this, I haven't done it yet, but when I click on it, it's going to open an output window, and it's going to trace the words, mouse clicked. Click, there's my output window, and there's the words, mouse clicked. I can change this to anything. I can make it, because this is a coding video, hello world. And when I run it, and I click on it, it's going to say hello world. Whatever I put there, it's going to output. Okay, well what I want it to do, that's fine, I can leave that here, and I can say here, you clicked. But I also wanted to do something more. I wanted to send some information, specifically a text variable, to this. So I'm going to, I'm going to modify this function by adding another line in. And I'm going to say, remember that we called this sent message. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back down to my code here, and I'm going to say send message dot text, which turns blue, which means Flash recognizes this as something that's important. It recognizes it as a, a predefined um, um, variable. Send message, which is this thing, okay, this text box, the text value of that is going to be equal to open bracket, close bracket, and in between the brackets, uh, um, sorry, quote, I'm going to say you clicked. And now when I run this, and I click here, it's going to do two things. It's going to say trace, you clicked in the output window, and it's also going to add this text, you clicked, up in here. Great. So there's the output window, that's the trace, and this is the text we sent to the text field. Now I don't need this trace here, because I trace is just used to know that the function is being run. So I'm going to, actually I'm going to leave it there, I'm just going to, comment it out by adding two, two slashes here. And now when I run this and I click this button, you clicked. Sweet. Okay, so that's working. And I can change that to anything I want. I can say Mr. St. Romain is excellent. Oh, it's, oh, it's, he can't spell though. All right, there you have it. Should probably add a little bit of space there. See? He really is. Alright, go try it.